slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. I've got Snowman on the hijack, raised to 17 over a limp, and get calls from the button and big blind. I might bet this flop after a big blind check, but decide against it, and the button bets 20. While this could easily be a bluff, when the big blind calls, it's unlikely I'm ahead of both players, so I make what feels like a sensible fold. Mm. On the bright side, there is a promotion running for the most laughable runout for folded pocket eights. So let's get lucky. The turn goes check check, so that's 20 points right there. A brick river would add 15. Oh, it's an offsuit six, even better. And it goes check check again. Oh, we're so close. Okay, if one of them has, I don't know, a seven, and the other has pocket fives, we could be in range. Oh, they both have ace high? You guys, we did it. What's the prize? Those two split my money? Ah, you live for these moments. Everyone folds to me, so I raise to 11 from the hijack with king 10 and the small blind calls. I flop open-ended, and after he checks, I'd normally bet, but this guy reeks of check raise. And facing that from a short stack could be thorny, so I take the free card. The turn's the brickest of bricks, and small blind leads for 18. Because of my flop check, I can afford a call here to chase my draw. Also, I've seen this guy blast off with 5 high, so a king can still be good here. The river hands me the straight, and small blind overbet shoves for a buck 25. I see three scenarios here. A, he's got jack 10, knowing that a 10 has to call. B, he's just got a 10, and we chop. Or C, he's bluffing or overplaying a worse hand. In the end, I pray it's not A. Want it to be C, but assume it's B. Yeah, I call. You chopping it? I ask the small blind why shove when two pair is likely no longer good. He says life's all about overvaluing assets long past their prime, and leaves the table to unload his 401k on the St. Louis Brown stockings to win this year's World Series. Is there any better feeling than flopping quads? Flopping a straight flush. Obviously, I don't, I don't get I raise to 15 from the hijack with ace-king and the cutoff calls. On this king-high flop, I bet 20, and he calls. After turning trips, I bet 55, and the cutoff calls again, but kind of fake awkwardly, almost trying to play it off like he's reluctant. The river jack doesn't complete the flush draw, but something tells me I'm behind, so I check. After a brief ponder, he bets 140, and I tank. There's the occasional bluff here, and a few overvalued hands like king-queen or king-ten, but far more value hands like king-jack, sticky pocket jacks, slow-played sets that are now boats, even bad gut shot draws that got there. And despite all that, and my read on the turn, I just can't find a fold button. Mm and getting over this one's gonna take a lot of therapy. Yeah, I just figured on a wet flop like that, he's not gonna slow play his set, but I think I just have to trust my instincts there. Like, I'm better than that. I don't know. Would you have folded? Sir, this is a pottery barn. A few shuffles later, I'm on the cutoff with king five, a hand I'd normally fold, but since I'm on tilt chasing my losses, I bet 12 and get two callers. After flopping top pair, I bet 18 and small blind calls. The turn demotes me to second pair, but brings a flush draw. Small blind checks, and I could check back or keep firing. I choose to fire and bet 27, which small blind calls. I'm probably behind, so let's conjure up a nice river card with the help of YouTube magic. Hit pause now and forward this video to every single person you've ever met in your entire life. So far, most of you have met around 40,000 people. My first videos got around 2.5 thousand views, so if you all share this episode to the 40,000 people you've met, this video would get 100 million views, which would be a fairly respectable number. So let's do that right now. Did you do it? Everyone you've met from birth till now? Okay, let's see if it works. Oh, I river the nuts. Small blind checks, I bet 90, and he tank folds two pair. From the entire Slow Poker team, we thank you for making YouTube magic a reality. Holy sh! I was kidding. I was just messing around. You people really did that? Holy sh! I'm on the cutoff with ace queen and raise over one limper to 22. The button, who just lost big with queens under aces, shoves his last eight bucks, after which the small blind and limper call. The flop looks great for me, but small blind leads for 25 and UTG calls. I just don't see small blind leading flop here with a made hand. If I'm in his shoes with pocket fives or pocket fours or five four, then I'm check raising, not leading. So I put him on a worse queen. As for the UTG pre-flop limp caller post-flop flatter, I DFK, but he's surely behind. So I follow my gut that I'm ahead and raise to 100. After small blind shoves and I call, I get nervous that I'm overvaluing top air top kicker until I hear some welcome words. Dealer, please don't help. And things are looking up. I gotta say, after that ace-king debacle, I was in a really dark place, but after king-five and ace-queen, I feel like I made a real breakthrough. Hey, thanks for listening. Security. And that'll do it for episode four of Slow Poker. I'd be grateful if you'd like and subscribe. Also, if you met someone new since the king-five hand, please share the video with that person. You're the best. Until next time, this has been Slow Poker.